This video brought to you in association with Amazon.com, your one-stop shop for all things Arizona Cardinals, NFL, and much, much more. Links in the description. On January 8th, 2019, the Arizona Cardinals shocked everyone when they named Cliff Kingsbury their new head coach. It came across as shocking because, for one, they had just hired a new head coach one year prior. First year NFL head coach Steve Wilkes, who was subsequently fired after the team went 3-13, resulting in the Cards having the first overall pick in the 2019 draft. And second, Cliff Kingsbury, also a first-time NFL head coach, had not been a successful college head coach, leaving many to question his qualifications for the job, especially with more accomplished coaching candidates out there. In six seasons as head coach and play caller for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Cliff Kingsbury finished with an overall record of 35 and 40, and three bowl game appearances with one win. Since his first offensive coordinator job at Houston in 2011, Kingsbury's offenses have often ranked high nationally in total offense and specifically in passing offense. His teams were known to score a lot of points, but they were also known to give up a lot. However, Kingsbury is still recognized as one of football's brightest and most innovative offensive minds, having tutored six future NFL quarterbacks, including first round selections Patrick Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, and Johnny Manziel, as well as Case Keenum, Davis Webb, and Nick Shimanek. The Cardinals will proceed without an offensive coordinator as Kingsbury himself will be the de facto coordinator. His hiring was another one of those situations where the team sought to elevate an offensive mind to head coach so as not to lose them to some other team next year, should he prove successful, a la Freddie Kitchens. I must admit, I've never seen a coaching staff quite like this one. Including Kingsbury himself, there are 11 coaches on the offensive side of the ball. The most tenured of which is passing game coordinator Tom Clements. Tom spent 11 years, from 2006 through 2016, with the Green Bay Packers, serving as quarterbacks coach, offensive coordinator, and assistant head coach at different times. He coached Brett Favre and helped develop Aaron Rodgers. Outside of him, most of the experience comes from running backs coach James Saxon and offensive line coach Sean Kugler, or Kugler, I don't know. The rest of the offensive staff has a combined 25 years of experience, with three of them only having a single year of experience apiece. Kingsbury brought with him his variation of the air raid slash run and shoot offense. While admittedly his offenses were always among the highest ranking and most explosive in college, there have been questions as to whether it'll translate to the pros. But so far the early returns have been good. It helps that Cliff Kingsbury was able to land a quarterback that is perfectly suited to run his offense. Hilariously enough, while he was still coaching at Texas Tech, they were set to face off against the Oklahoma Sooners, of whom Kyler Murray was the starting quarterback. And Kingsbury made it very clear how enamored he was with Murray, having been trying to recruit the young quarterback since he was in high school. Kingsbury went as far as to state, well, I'd take him with the first pick of the draft if I could. I know." And then a few short months later, Kingsbury found himself as the head coach of the team that just happened to have the first pick in the NFL draft. And Kyler had decided he wanted to play football. Kyler's skill set and Cliff's scheme are a match made in heaven, and the two of them are clearly fond of each other, even wearing almost matching suits for their introductory press conference. Super cute. If you're not familiar with Kyler, which I'm not sure how you can't be, but the breakdown is Kyler is an undersized one-year starter with rare playmaking talent. He's electric has a live arm, good mental makeup, and the skill set to produce at a high level in the right offense. I remember when I first saw him playing. It was at the beginning of the college football season, months before he would declare for the NFL draft. I excitedly showed my wife his highlights, exclaiming, this is the greatest quarterback that will never play in the NFL. I assumed since he had already signed his contract to play baseball, that he would go on to do that. 
But as soon as the rumors started floating around that he might declare for the NFL, I knew he was going to play football. Because the sport meant that much to him. If it didn't, he wouldn't have gone back to Oklahoma for his final year of eligibility. He would have already been playing baseball. In his one year as starter at Oklahoma, Tyler threw for 4,361 yards, 42 touchdowns, to 7 interceptions, and a completion percentage of 69%. He also added an additional 1,000 yards on the ground, and 12 rushing scores. Tyler and Cliff should prove to be a formidable duo. They've been on the same page since day one, so don't be surprised if we see them in lockstep on game days. In terms of weapons, Arizona still has running back David Johnson, who was selected to the Pro Bowl in 2016 following a breakout season that saw him record over 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. He would injure his knee at the end of that season, and unfortunately, injuries have been a constant issue since. But there's no reason to think he can't return to form if he stays healthy. In terms of receivers, the room is anchored by longtime veteran and overall nice guy Larry Fitzgerald who could not bring himself to retire following a 3-13 season because, come on, he's an 11-time Pro Bowler who's led the league in receptions and receiving touchdowns twice. He deserves to go out on a high note. Opposite him is second-year receiver Christian Kirk. Last year, Kirk was one of the lone bright spots on the offense. He had 43 catches, 590 yards, and three touchdowns. He averaged nearly 14 yards per reception. He's kind of a rare breed as his strengths coming in were his mental acumen, route running, and his desire to compete. He's expected to take that next step and truly emerge, so look for 2019 to be his breakout season. The Cards also drafted a receiver by the name of Andy Isabella. Isabella is described as a competitive, well-rounded receiver possessing both elite quickness and long speed to go with solid play strength. Isabella has the feet and the fakes to uncover in a hallway closet, and the former high school sprint champion proved to Georgia that his ability to win deep should not be underestimated. Isabella could become a menace on option routes with the ability to add vertical routes from the slot, but he must improve his catching consistency and smoothness into his breaks in order to transition all that speed to the NFL. At tight end, the team has all reliable Charles Clay, formerly of Buffalo and Miami. So the offense has weapons, and if the offensive line can protect Murray, they should be explosive. But on this team, the offense wasn't really the concern. Remember, Cliff's offenses have always been potent, but his defenses have suffered. Enter defensive coordinator Vance Joseph. You may recall him as the former Denver Broncos head coach, a job he probably shouldn't have been given considering his claim to fame was coordinating a Miami defense that helped the Dolphins make the playoffs in 2016, but then subsequently got kicked around by the Steelers. However, Joseph is a capable coordinator, and his experience as a former head coach should prove helpful and should also mean that Kingsbury won't have to worry about the defense very much, as I'm sure he was hoping. That way, he can keep his focus on the offense where it belongs, and so far, early in the preseason, it's looking pretty sharp. But is it gonna work? I don't know. But I sure hope it does. Not just for Kyler's sake, but for all the people he doesn't realize he's playing for. All the undersized guys that won't be granted an opportunity to prove themselves if he's unsuccessful. Guys like UCF's Mackenzie Milton. He's probably the best college quarterback you've heard nothing about. Mackenzie Milton is a 5'11", 185-pound scrappy playmaker. He's an athletic passer who frequently flashes creativity within the pocket to shake pass rushers and extend plays. He throws well on the move and has illustrated the desirable ability to throw with placement while moving himself. Milton's best qualities shine when he's off script, where his calmness under pressure can generate chunk plays. He's also deceptively fast when he starts running and can change direction with ease. His skill set is very similar to that of Kyler Murray's. Although he doesn't possess the strongest arm, it's pretty impressive what he's able to do with it. He's a bit unorthodox, often throwing off base and on the move, yet 
his accuracy doesn't suffer much from either. But more than anything, he radiates all the intangibles franchises are looking for. He's a great leader that's so familiar with his offense that he's able to assist everyone, and his teammates love him. Milton was a large part of why UCF was undefeated in 2017 and most of 2018. Unfortunately, his 2018 season was cut short by a catastrophic leg injury that almost saw Milton lose his leg to amputation. Kinda like Teddy Bridgewater in 2016, except this one was caused by a completely legal hit, of which KZ has forgiven the other player who was receiving death threats in the wake of the accident because it's football and shit happens. Although it's possible KZ never plays another down of football, he sure is determined to try. And it would be nice if he could get the opportunity because he certainly played well enough to earn it. But NFL teams will be reluctant to even work him out if Kyler Murray isn't successful. So what do you think? Will Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray be successful? Is it possible one succeeds while the other doesn't? What's your take on undersized quarterbacks like Murray and Milton? Let me know in the comments. Remember to peruse the fan shop on Amazon because every purchase you make through one of my links helps this channel. Of course, the best way to help is to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so that you are the first to know when new videos drop. If you'd like to see more, please check out some of my other videos on the left, tell your friends, and thanks for watching.